right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, a pretty insane classic physique. A competitor by the name of Laszlo Corrali. He's going to be competing in just 11 days. This is a post from his coach, Patrick Tour, And a lot of people talking about this update because of the insane V-taper that he has, especially in the front double bicep pose. I think that was the main pose that really caught people's attention. I mean, if you pause the video there, and look at him in that front double bicep pose. Just how insane that taper is with the lat flare from the front, the way that he's got his arms positioned at kind of an upward tilt, and just how small his waist is going going down from this crazy lat taper that he's got. It's pretty unreal, and a lot of you guys are sending this to me, asking me what I think, and I agree with you guys. This guy's incredible, and I think it's going to be interesting to see what he does um, in 11 days. I'm curious to see what his conditioning looks like, because you can see, as you continue to watch this video... There's points in the video where when he relaxes his midsection, his abs don't look that deep. And then as he continued to pose, I noticed he didn't have very strided shoulders either in these poses, so maybe conditioning would still be a question mark here. But as far as overall shape, the guy looks incredible. There's no denying that. So shout out to Laszlo Corrali, and best of luck to him in 11 days. Now, next up in the news, Ian Valier says he fixed the chest issue at least somewhat in one day. So he put up this story post on his Instagram earlier today where he says one session with Ian Cassipel and the funky gap is basically gone. It's a Christmas miracle. Tons of tightness and adhesions pulling the pec down and in. And he says they scraped away the adhesions and some good old manual therapy. And now we're looking A1. Big reminder to be diligent and consistent with your therapy. So I actually couldn't tell at first which picture he was saying was the after picture. Is it the left or is it the right? Because honestly, I didn't think these two pictures looked very different. Now, I think in the picture on the right, the light is hitting that center of his chest a little bit in a different way than on the left. So in that picture on the right, you can see the center of his chest a little bit more clearly defined just by the way the light's hitting it. I think in that picture, that's where you can see the gap more. Now, the picture on the left, he looks like he's kind of red, like he just got done with therapy and someone had been pressing and rubbing and and kind of pulling on those areas. You can see around his chest area, it looks dark and red in that left side. So I'm, I'm guessing that's what he's referring to. In the center of his chest, doesn't look to be as distinctly separated. But to be completely honest with you guys, I didn't think these two pictures looked very different. And obviously he's not on stage here. He's not hitting an actual pose. He's not under stage lighting. And I think more importantly, this isn't a video. Because I think the, where the pec issue was the most visible, to me at least, was in the videos where he started to hit the most muscular and as he kind of brought his arms together and then you could kind of see the gap in his pecs form as his pecs kind of squeezed together in that most muscular. And I think that's where it became very evident. So can we tell very much from this picture? Honestly, I didn't think so. I'm curious to hear what you guys think in the comments below. Do you notice a difference in these two pictures? And if you do, do you think it's possible that this issue could have been fixed or mostly fixed in one day, in one session? I think we're really not going to know for sure until we see him on stage next. And I think it's probably pretty premature to say the issue is completely fixed. And like I said, for me, it was most visible in motion, in the poses. When you can see it the best, I think, in video. As his pecs come together, as his arms come together in that most muscular, you can see the gap form in that pose. And I think that's where we're really going to see the next time we see him on stage, um, whether or not the issue has been fixed. And maybe he'll post some more pictures, maybe some better pictures. We can see a little bit more clearly the difference. But honestly, um, and again, no shade on Ian. I just don't see a huge difference in these two pictures. Now, next up in the news, I want to talk about this announcement because I thought this was pretty cool. So there is going to be a new pro show on the 2024 schedule, pro bodybuilding, and it's going to be an Olympia qualifier. And that's going to be called the Detroit Pro. And this is something that's going to be promoted by Fuad Abiyad, Ben Chow, Squat Like Chow, and Paul Lazan. So hats off to Fuad, because I know he already uh, promotes a show, the Fuad Abiyad Classic, which is a natural show, which I love. I love to see anybody with a big platform promote a natural show. So now the fact that he's got a pro show, and now there's another opportunity for people to qualify at the Olympia, another opportunity for pros to win money. This is always going to be a net positive for the sport. And we do know that another relatively new show, the Indie Pro, that show has now since gone away. Which kind of sucks because that was a that was a Midwest show. We don't have a ton of really big competitive shows here in the Midwest, aside from the Arnold Classic. So Detroit is kind of in that realm. So now to have another pro show in this area, obviously the Indy Pro was in Indiana. 
the Arnold Classic is in Ohio. Now to have a show in Michigan, I think is good, especially with the absence now of that Indie Pro, which I thought was a really good show and had some really stiff competition um, in recent years. So again, hats off to Fuad, Ben, and uh, Paul for making this happen. I think it's cool to have another pro show on the roster. And it will be a pro amps. They are going to have an NPC portion of the show as well as professional bodybuilding and all NPC amateur classes. Now, next up in the news, a physique update from Brett Wilkin, where I think he looks significantly bigger. He looks like he's put on a pretty substantial amount of size here. And we haven't seen him compete in a while. I know that he took some time away to focus on his family because he is a dad now. But he he does look significantly bigger to me. And I think it'll be interesting to see Brett with this added size on stage. Although I didn't really think size was an issue for him the last time we saw him on stage. And I think the big one was the Arnold Classic where a lot of people were hyping him going into the show. Like he was going to potentially win that Arnold. And I felt that at that Arnold, Brett was big enough and he stood pretty well with those guys. But I think it was overall his conditioning and his midsection with that conditioning that let him down at that show. But to me, in this update, he looks big as a house. So a, a Brett Wilkin with better conditioning than the Arnold and more size, I think could be a pretty dangerous Brett Wilkin. Now, next up in the news, Rafael Brandau reveals his new coach. He was working with Chris Aceto for a pretty long period of time, and now he's announced that he's going to be working with Neil Yoda Hill, the former coach of none other than Flex Lewis. And I wasn't too surprised to hear this, to be completely honest, because we know that Rafael and Flex are pretty close friends. I've seen them train together a lot. I've seen them at the Dragons Lair together a lot. Um, so I wasn't too surprised to hear that Neil was the choice of coach for the big switch. He also announced, though, with this announcement, that he's not going to be competing in this year's Olympia. He's going to take the year off to kind of go back to the drawing board, figure things out, um, and, and come back in 2024. Now keep in mind, Raphael was top 10 at this year's Olympia. Pretty impressive placing for Raphael. I even saw people making the argument that he could have been higher, or that he should have been higher. So I certainly think that this past year we saw one of the best versions of Raphael that we ever saw, and hopefully he finds you know the right synergy with this new coach, and they're able to bring something even better. I know that Neil is one of the best to ever do it. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, the latest physique update from Peter Clance here. Now, Peter is going to be competing in the M-Pro Classic this weekend, which a lot of us are looking forward to seeing. FYI, it's going to be a Sunday show, so keep that in mind. It's not on a Saturday like they typically are. It's going to be Sunday, and there's something like a seven-hour time difference from, from over there in Spain to here where I'm at in Eastern Standard Time. So keep that in mind when you're trying to watch the live stream or pay-per-view. The timing is going to be a little bit wonky, and it's on a Sunday, not a Saturday. Now, Peter looks pretty big here. I'm still a little bit iffy on his conditioning. It, this is just going to be a very interesting show to see because typically at a show like this, you see a lot of really talented international guys show up to try to get that Olympia qualification and not have to come to the States. Because for a lot of these guys, a show like this is closer to them and easier to get to. And I think that's what we're going to see here. You've got Peter. You've got Michael Crizzo. You've got Joan Perdal. You've got Emir Omarajic. You've got Andrea Presti. You've got Wellington uh, Baptista from uh, from Brazil. And we're going to talk some more about some of those guys and their physique updates in, in tomorrow's video. Or Friday's video, maybe. But this is the first one that I've really seen from Peter Clance here during his prep for this show. Or at least close to the show. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. What are your predictions for this weekend's M-Pro Classic? That's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you like it, subscribe, click the bell notification, all that good stuff if you have not already. And as always, I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.